Ah, it's Miss Beckett again. I'm glad to see you today. Do you remember the first Bible story you ever heard? Let's think about that for a minute. We can start with creation when God created the whole world in just seven days. He did something different every day until he got it just perfect. What about Noah? Um, when God told him to build that huge ark and take two of every animal and put it on the boat with him, and then the rain started, didn't it? Have you thought of one yet? How about Moses? The story of Moses is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. When all of God's people were being held captive in Egypt, and he asked Moses to be the one to get them out. And it was not an easy thing to do. We all know about the story of Jesus' birth, don't we? In Bethlehem, and um, of the story of the shepherds, and the wise men, and the angels. You know the story of Jesus going to the temple when he was about 12 years old? It's the only story in the Bible that is about Jesus when he was a little boy. But he went with his family, and when everybody got ready to go home, they packed up and left and got way down the road and realized they didn't have Jesus with them. They had to go back, and Jesus was in the temple talking to all the priests. That's not surprising, is it? There's so many good stories in the Bible. Well, do you remember who told you that first story? Might have been a Sunday school teacher, could have been at Bible school, maybe the children's sermon or Jay Walker's. You know, a lot of you have been going to this church for your whole life. I remember some of you being in the nursery here. I don't remember the first story I heard either or who told it to me. But I went to church when I was little, just like you are. I went to Sunday school and Bible school. I was also in the children's choir, and that's another good place to learn things about Jesus. Um, and we wore those little robes that had all the gathers up here, the little white robes. And girls, I remember you wearing those same kind of little robes when you were angels in the Christmas plays. And being in a play is another really good way to learn things about Jesus. I learned a lot about Jesus at church. But I also remember Christmas Eve at my house, um, my two brothers and my sister and I would be all ready for bed, and then my whole family would go to the living room, and my daddy would read the Christmas story out of the Bible. We always prayed at every meal. It's probably where I learned my first prayer, right around the kitchen table at my house. So yes, I learned a lot about Jesus at church, but I also learned a lot at home from my mom and dad, and you know what? They probably learned the same thing from their mom and dad. Now, our story last week was about a young man named Timothy. And you will probably remember, he was a good friend of Paul's. Um, Paul took him on a missionary journey with him. And then, then he became the preacher at the church in Ephesus. You may also remember, though, the first stories that Timothy heard about Jesus came from his grandmother and his mother not from Paul. Now, today's story takes place many, many years later, and Paul and Timothy are both old men. Well, the good news is that Timothy and Paul are still good friends. Timothy is still the preacher at the church in Ephesus. The bad news is that Paul is in jail again. But the good news is, even in jail, Paul's heart is still full of love. He's still happy and joyful because he remembers that he's got Jesus right here by his side. Now, Paul is still writing letters to the churches, but also writing letters to his good friend Timothy. I want you to listen to this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. It's found in the second book of Timothy, which is in your New Testament. Okay? Every time I say your name in prayer, which is almost every day, I thank God for you. I miss you a lot, especially when I remember the last time we were together, and I look forward to happy times together again. That reminds me of another happy memory, your strong faith. Your faith, Timothy, was passed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice, and now to you. What a gift you received from them, and what a gift you can now share with others. Then Paul encouraged Timothy to keep that faith strong. He compared it to a fire. You know, if you've seen a fire which is really low and then all of a sudden it'll blaze up and get big, that's how he wanted Timothy's face to be, strong, blazing up like a fire. Don't you think Timothy was proud that Paul remembered that he learned it 
in the beginning, he learned it from his grandmother and his mother, and he called them by name. Paul still remembered where it started for him. Yes, it did. He did take him on a missionary journey. He helped him become the preacher at Ephesus. But Paul was not the first one to tell Timothy a story about Jesus. It came from his grandmother to his mother and then to Timothy. And then Paul said one more thing in his letter. He reminded Timothy that God did not give us a spirit that is timid, but one that is powerful, loving, and self-controlled. That's right. That's our Bible verse for this month. Timothy received the gift of stories and prayers and the love of Jesus from his mother and his grandmother, and he shared that gift with others. And you have received that gift too, from your Sunday school teachers, your mom or dad, grandparents, whoever. You've also got that gift. Aren't you lucky? Because you can share it with others too. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, I am powerful. I am loving because of you. Help me to keep learning, to keep loving, and to share your stories with others. Amen. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.